The soybean harvest was going as expected for Zach Short and his crew. Until a call came over the radio that a combine had started smoking. When Zach arrived, he went to climb on the combine to investigate. But no one realized it had come in contact with a low-hanging power line. 12,000 volts of electricity shot through Zach's body. With Zach's hand still gripping the ladder, the crew used a plastic shovel to pry him free and called 911. EMS Shane Pearson responded to the call. The biggest thing I noticed right off the bat was his feet. His work boots had just kind of been blown open. He was in a very critical condition at that point. Zach was transported to the nearest hospital. At the time, his wife Jody was at home with their one-year-old daughter, Brindley. I got a phone call that Zach had been in an accident, and my first question was, is he alive? Because I had no idea how bad the accident was. And it was his mom on the phone, and she said she didn't know. Jody rushed to the hospital with Zach's parents. When you get to the hospital and you can just smell burnt flesh everywhere, it's pretty bad. Knew how bad it was. They told us that he was going to be flown to a different hospital. And that's when it really hit, hit us that this is, this is not good. Zach was life flighted to Vi Christie Hospital in Wichita, Kansas, and admitted into their burn center. Dr. Robert Bingaman was the attending physician. He had some of the deepest uh, electrical injuries I'd ever seen. Both of his lower extremities were uh, severely burned. And, uh, actually, uh, areas on his feet and ankles were charred. The chances of living were no better than 50-50. Doctors put Zach into a medically induced coma and worked around the clock to treat his burns. Meanwhile, Jody and the rest of the family prayed and spread the word. I posted on Facebook, and that's like the minute the prayer started. Doctors were able to stabilize Zach, but he was still in critical condition. Three days later, he went into cardiac arrest. The nurses um, pulled me in the room, and the doctor, while he was coding, they were performing chest compressions on him. And we were just behind him rallying, saying, come on, Zach, come on, Zach, come back to us, Zach. And, and, he, and then finally, the nurse had said, we've got, we've got a pulse. But as quickly as Zach's heart recovered, his kidneys began shutting down, and his lungs started filling with fluid. The doctor told us he's not going to make it. He basically told us to tell him goodbye. So I took our daughter in and told her that he was going going to heaven. Friends and family gathered at the hospital and waited for him to pass. They soon realized God was still at work. Blood pressure started to come up and oxygen saturation levels started to come up. And uh, and he began to stabilize. The doctor said, I, th I think he's going to make a liar out of me. <laughs> I don't, I don't, he's getting better. God was, it was he's in the room with us. <laughs> He was there, and he was answering people's prayers. There's no doubt in my mind that God touched Zach that night and, and turned things around and gave him a chance. Over the next couple of weeks, Zach continued to improve. His kidneys started working, and his lungs started to empty, and the doctor was just like, I've never seen anything like this before. Unfortunately, doctors had to amputate Zach's lower legs because of infection. It would save his life, but now they had another concern, whether Zach had suffered brain damage. The only way to find out was to bring him out of the coma. When I woke up in the hospital, it was like I had a whole bunch of dreams. I kind of knew what happened, but not really at the same time. And my wife was the first one to come in there. My first question was, do you remember me? And he, of course, he said, I'm not going to forget you and Brinley. <laughs> And then she said, well, you, you remember you, you got shocked in the field, and that's why right there it clicked in my head. I remembered exactly what happened. The next three months would be hard, as Zach struggled through extensive physical therapy and multiple surgeries. I would definitely get angry and break down quite a bit. I just kept praying and, and thought, you know, there's, there's a lot of people out there that care about me. I have a lot to live for still. I just got to keep trying, and, and God kind of showed me the light. 
Then on Valentine's Day, Zach was released to go home. His town welcomed him in the streets. I couldn't believe it. I broke down when we drove through him because there was people out there with signs saying, we love you, Zach. He says, how am I going to thank all these people? And I says, you know, from what I can see, they want to thank you because you brought them back to their faith. Zach has become accustomed to his new legs and is thankful to get back to farming and being a husband and a father. In fact, he and Jody are expecting their second child, a boy. If it wasn't for all the prayers, God wouldn't have heard that we needed a miracle, many, many miracles, and we wouldn't have received the miracle that we got. You looked at what the doctor's reports were and how bad my injuries were, and there's nothing that explains my recovery, but, you know, God watching over me.